Amen. Amen. I get excited to come to church, man. Amen. I be happy to come to church. I do. I do because I I'm expecting it, but I'm always expecting something. I'm always expecting something. Mutual moment part six. Mutual moment part six. What if I said? What if I said? Let me see. Let me think of something. Let me think of something. What if I said? What time is it? Twelve twelve. Oh, and, and I appreciate you guys being here, and I, and I appreciate everybody who watches online too. We track that, man. We are. We are increasing our online presence every week, so I really appreciate those who tune in online. What if I said to you, the first person that came down to this altar at 12 o'clock on the dot, I was going to buy him a tank of gas. How, how much your, your tank cost? Right? And, I, and you tell me $300, I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know. <laughs> up to 100 bucks, I'll buy you a tank of gas. First one down here at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Who will come down here at 12 o'clock? But you know what's, what's cooler than your hands going up? Because I appreciate the honesty. Mm -hmm. Was the look on your faces. <laughs> Some of your faces instantly changed. Mm -hmm. Some of your faces instantly changed because the expectation of, oh my God, at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. I got the opportunity. Thank you, Dad. And that's a big deal nowadays. Yes, it is. Right? But that's how you ought to be every time you come into the house of God. Every time you come into the house of God, you ought to be saying, at any moment, at any moment, and I'm going to be ready. At any moment, I'm going to be ready. All right. Um, Trey, take us to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 46. This is a familiar um, uh, passage of scripture and a very familiar story to most of us, but I just... God put it on my heart a couple weeks ago, and uh, and so here, here we are. And God actually told me to share it this day, this this particular day. I was gonna I was gonna do this another day, uh, and God He said he, he a few weeks ago He said that's the Sunday I want you to I want you to I want you to share that. So so here we are, right? We just do what God tells us to do. And and listen, here here's the thing. There's a there's a distinct difference between having faith and using it. Amen. There's a, there's a distinct difference. Between having it and using it. Listen, most believers trust God. Amen. That's, a, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. Most believers trust God. But, but what you do with that trust is a whole other thing. <clears throat> Just because you have faith doesn't mean it's going to work for you if you don't use it. Amen. Right? Right? You've heard it said, knowledge is power. Not if you don't use it. Amen. What does knowing something benefit you if you don't put into practice what you know? So we got to move from, from the space of, of being content with saying, I trust God, and that becoming a mantra that we simply use to keep from giving up, but not something that we put into practice so that we can go from space to space or grace to grace or see our life transition from one season to the next season and see physical change, right? Amen. It's not enough to just say, I trust God. You got to show it. And if you show it, you got to, if you have it, you got to do something about it. Amen. Because life, life's going life's gonna, to life's gonna make you prove it one way or another. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I mean, look, you, you know it by now. <laughs> Listen, you know it by now. Most of us have been living long enough and have gone through enough stuff and are going through enough stuff to know that life is going to make us prove whether we trust God or not. Amen. Right? Amen. There's people who say they trust God and getting it handed to them. Mm -hmm. And there's people who, who trust God and getting it handed to them and fighting back. Not just standing around talking about, I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand, but working the word of God and bucking the devil every time he comes. Amen. Which one are you? Mm -hmm. Listen, 
Your circumstances don't define you. You've got to decide. Your circumstances don't define you, and neither do people. Your circumstances don't define you. And you got to stop saying that's who you are. I am what's happening around me. I'm a victim of my circumstance. Well, nobody expected much of me anyway. Who am I? Why should God do it for me? Or this is what everybody says about me anyway. This is how everybody feels about me anyway. And so that's the, that's the spirit you take on. And so you become that. Years ago, I decided what people were going to think about me. And that's what they started thinking about me. Now, look, here, look, there's always one off. <laughs> I decided how people were going to view me. And I acted like it so long that they started looking at me like that. But some of you just waiting for God to, to do something. In your prayer, you just say, God, do something. God, I just need you to do something. But the real question is, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Truth of the matter is, some people don't know who you are. Some people are unsure of who you are, and some people are absolutely terrified of who you are. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You ever been in a situation that said, they don't, they don't know who I am? Mm -hmm. And you knew they didn't know who you were. You know they didn't really understand the depth of who you really were. So let me get into this, because you know the story. I just I want to get it and make, make these points, and then I'll let you out of here. You got to check your surroundings. All right. I'm going to say some things that might be hard to hear. Mm -hmm. It's 12 or 1 if you want to. It's coming in. Let me tell you why I ain't buying that. That's my dude, but I ain't buying that. Because if you really believed I was going to fill the take up, you'd have been down here at 12 o'clock. You'd have been here at 12 o'clock. But I like it. He, I didn't forget. Well, ain't nobody did nothing. All y'all got faith. All y'all got faith. And guess what? Guess what? God gave that to me. He's sitting right there. Look at this one. He done started and turned around. All y'all my brother. God gave that to me sitting right there. And y'all still ain't on the same page I'm on. Let me keep reading. Then she got it. First one down, he got it. And what's interesting, let me show you how you just illustrated my point between having faith and using faith. Even after 12, a lot of you still believed I was going to do it. But none of you had the faith to come down here. Out there talking amongst yourself. Still wasn't moving. Yeah. Reminded me out loud. Still wasn't moving. Started and turned around. This one got a head way up high. This one can barely sit down. But nobody moved. Do you get the point? Yes, sir. That's what you came here for. Mm -hmm. I looked around the room. I, I don't think there's one person in here who didn't believe I was going to do that. But not one of you came down here. Mm -hmm. I set it up for you. I said, at 12 o'clock. What if I said, I did say it. And what hurt me was most of you believed it. And you didn't do nothing about it. And that's where we are in life. We think God can do this for me, but I'm just not quite sure. And that not quite sure is why you don't have it. Did I just show it to you? I can go home. We can just, we can just dismiss. What if I said, nah, it's too 
<laughs> I love the Lord. I've been playing that. God put it in my spirit. Right over there. You got to check your surroundings. And when I mean check your surroundings, I'm talking about checking your surroundings. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because I don't think you will. Now they came to Jericho, and as he went, he being Jesus went out of Jericho with his disciples. Look at some people online saying, man, I wish this, I knew I should have came to church this Sunday. This is my Sunday. You're right. You missed it. Try us again next week. We'll be here. Now when they came to Jericho, as Jesus went out of Jericho with his disciples and a, and a great multitude. Now I want to set this up. Jesus is going out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. So a lot of people are following Jesus. And, a, and, and a, bl a blind Bartimaeus, right? The son of Timaeus sat by the road begging. Everybody know that story? Fred Hammond wrote a beautiful song about this. I mean, I mean, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And when, when, when he heard, so here's a blind man, an outcast of society, a beggar, right? His only means of support is, is the generosity of, of anybody who would feel sorry for him, essentially. And when he heard, he asked, what is this commotion? Because here, here's, 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 here's what I thought about when I thought about blind Barnabas. Even though he couldn't see, all of the rest of his senses were sharp. Right? Because what did I show you five minutes ago? Somebody missed the moment. Mm -hmm. So this guy, even though he couldn't see, he could hear, he could talk, and he could feel. And he felt an energy. I want you to get this. He felt the energy. Listen. Listen, he was dependent. He couldn't eat unless somebody gave him money. You know, we'll stick a dollar out the window, think we're doing something, stick a five out. Oh, God, we're the greatest Christian in the world. He, he hears and he feels something different. This mob of people are coming, but it's not just any mob of people. This is important for you to get because he's about to have a moment yes, yes. that he could have just as easily missed if he was distracted or unsure. He feels, wait, what, what's happening? Something's going on. I feel a different kind of energy. What's going on around me? They said to him, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And when he heard it was Jesus, instantly he began to cry out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Right? This guy is making a moment. You know what I love about this? And the reason why I said that? Because his disciples were following him, a great multitude were following him, there was a need all around him. We get frustrated because we have need and we feel like God is not responding to the need. That's always going to happen because God responds to faith. He doesn't respond to need. You mean to tell me a multitude of people follow Jesus and nobody needed nothing from him? Are you crazy? You've been catching hell all week. You come to church on Sunday and you ain't on heightened alert. You're not overly sensitive to the Holy Spirit instead of just being overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. It's the day. If you, if you want it, this is the day. If you don't, then I'm going to do what I can to do. If you were overly sensitive to the Spirit and not just overly sensitive, not only could you meet a moment, you could create one. Jesus is walking by this guy, been blind his whole life, outcast in society, victim of circumstance, whatever you want to call it. And all these people are following Jesus. And this guy who says, something different is in the air. Something feels different about today. Something feels different about what I hear and what I feel. Take two. That's all. 
you get one too. Sometimes you got to be about business. Amen. Sometimes you got to be about making something happen instead of waiting on something to happen. We spend our whole Christian life waiting on God to do something when we're going to get tired and start doing it ourselves. Just scared to death to make a move and you feel stuck because you are. You're stuck because you're scared and life has exposed it. This man is sensitive to something around him. Most Christians are just plain sensitive. You go out in the street and get caught every day but a child of God, and you will suck it up and keep moving. Come to church, I say one thing you don't like, I'll never see you again. <laughs> and that's sad. You will live with a person, sleep with a person who will treat you like crap, and go back to that place every day. Well, why was Bishop talking about me? Because that's what God told me to do. That's what I came here for, and I thought that's what you came here for. If I ain't talking about you and I ain't talking to you, one of us in the wrong place, me or you. Right. If you ever come here and you don't feel what I'm saying, you need to come see me after church and say, did you forget me? God didn't tell you nothing about me. Amen. You ain't talking to me at all. That thing didn't touch me nowhere. So if it hit, then you should say, God got me on his mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's all if it hit, you ought to say, God got me on his mind. Because Bishop got a lot more things to do than sit around and see who he can offend. Okay. And if you really knew me, you would know that and he knew who I am anyway. Amen. 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 But nevertheless, this ain't about me. This is about blind Bartimaeus. <laughs> Here's the issue I have. When this guy here is Jesus, he starts saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those around him warn him to be quiet. Now, please, one of you church folks, pretend it's Bible study, tell me why people following Jesus would stop somebody from crying out to Jesus. following him because of who he is Amen. and what he can do? Amen. Oh, or maybe it's because we think he's only going to do it for certain people. Mm -hmm. And maybe you convinced yourself that too and maybe you don't think you're one of those people. One thing about me, let me tell you right now, I've told you before, I'm going to tell you again, right, wrong, and different, I know who I am to my father. Amen. I know how he sees me. You might see me differently, but I know how he sees me. And he loves me. I'm the apple of his eye. There's nothing I can do to make him stop loving me. Nothing. Nothing I can say to make him turn away from me. Nothing. The people around him said, be quiet. Don't do that. What? Somebody who needs Jesus can't cry out to Jesus? Because you think they're not worthy? What if he thought he wasn't worthy? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Those of you who have faith and know you're not using it, or just have faith, okay, you don't want to say you're not using it. Let's just say everybody who got faith. Be honest with yourself. Do you believe what God says about you? Do you believe you're a lender and not a borrower? If you do, then stop getting mad when people ask you for money. Then you ain't got to give it to everybody, but you ain't got to be mad when they ask for it. That's right. It's a mindset. Every time I come out, ask you for money because they think you got it. <laughs> and the question is, do you want it? Thank you. Amen. Well, why are you mad at people asking to borrow it? Just say no. Don't mean you don't have it. You guys say I don't have it, just say I'm not giving it to you. All right. Not this time. Mm -hmm. Check with me 
me later. See how your mindset got to change? If this man didn't think he was worthy of the love of Christ, he would have missed the moment, but he knew he was, and he made the moment happen. Jesus didn't plan this. He did this, and I'm going to prove it to you in just a minute. Jesus didn't plan this. He did. He decided it, and it was so. So what I'm telling you is, if you, if God didn't plan to move you today, you can decide that he's going to move you today by the faith you exercise today. Amen. Go on it. Well, I would get excited if I knew the bishop said, I'm going to give you a take again. I just say, first one down here. told this man to be quiet, that man shouted all the more from in here. Uh-uh, Jesus can heal me. Jesus can save me. Jesus can set me free. And he's here? This is the time. He didn't come for you. I don't care. He ain't talking to you. I don't care. This ain't about you. I don't care. I'm making it about me. And Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still. Now, what would cause this to happen? Yes, Nicholas. The faith? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Too bad you ain't got no car, Nicholas. <laughs> Can you buy it before you pass me? Your name, Nicholas. But I love the engagement. I love it. And, and, and his mama said his daddy does. <laughs> 
You should have said his name Nicholas too. Yeah. My dad said, you got to see it all the way through. <laughs> if you're going to work, work. Amen. If you're going to get it, get it. Don't be playing around just today. Amen. Jesus stood still. I want you to see this. Jesus stood still. The faith of this nobody who everybody thought was nobody got Jesus' attention. And now everybody following Jesus who wanted Jesus' attention is now mad. <laughs> oh, don't think everybody happy when you get blessed. Please don't. Don't, don't be naive. Right? Don't be naive. Don't be naive. They ain't happy. They ain't happy. They ain't happy. That's why all the time you see me halfway in church because I, 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 I stay clear. I don't want them bad vibes. I just, I just <laughs> keep away. I just got to keep away. Okay, I'm looking at. <laughs> hey, how many nights you can't sleep because somebody hurt your feelings? Man, why you keep putting your feelings out there? Because <laughs> this is who I am. Well, then that's what you get. Why are you telling me? <laughs> you want to like change? Change your life. Change your life. So Jesus stood still, and then what did he do? He commanded him, them, to bring the man to him. Get this now. Get this now. Get this now. Let me set it up again. So Jesus is walking. The disciples are with him. A multitude following him. He's, he's on a purpose. He, he got, he's on a mission. He's got purpose. And all of a sudden, this blind man, this nobody, this outcast of society is hollering out from the depth of his soul, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because this man believes that this moment will change my life. And that faith stopped Jesus in his tracks. And Jesus said, bring him to me. If you don't get what I'm trying to say, let me say it like this. You have the power to change your life. Amen. And if you don't realize that, that means you're not coming enough and you're not retaining enough. You have the power to change your life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then why are there limits on what you're doing? Mm -hmm. There's too many people got faith and sitting on it and waiting on something to just drop through the roof. Amen. If it did, you know what the first thing you'd have to do? Fix your roof. <laughs> Check this out now. So he said, hey, hey, hey. Who is that? Who, who is that? Who, who is that? Who is that tugging on me like that? Who is that got a hold on me like that? Who is that that's got my full attention? Bring that person to me. I can't even move now. This, this dude is working faith. I'm attracted to faith. I'm drawn to faith. I move by faith. Now look, look what happened. Then they called the blind man. Oh, they're going to chirp her. Hey, hey, be of good cheer. The Messiah wants to see you. Now, this, in this life changing moment, this man gets up off the sitting on the ground, right? Jesus will see you. I know that. I want to see him. They said, Boss, he's calling you. Go to the next one. I can't wait. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And throwing aside his garment. Took that junk off. <laughs> Why is that significant, Bishop? Because sometimes you got to let go of some stuff. Mm -hmm. Good. And before you, before, you, before you stop clapping, <laughs> sometimes you got to let go of some people. Amen. 
See, he wasn't impressed by them. Oh, uh, uh, be happy. The master wants to see you. Dude, I called him. He got up, took that cloak off like he was somebody, and he was somebody. He was somebody who stopped Jesus without ever talking to him, without ever having hands laid on him, no oil rubbed on him, no intercessory for him, no seed stone for him, just pure, divine faith in action. This man got up like, yeah, yeah, he came for me. He came for me. And he walked up to Jesus with everything he had, just as proud and sure, broke, blind, beggar, nothing and nobody to anybody. Go on, he went to Jesus. So when he got to Jesus, Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? You see, when Jesus stopped, the moment had occurred. His faith had reached its destination. If you're thinking in your head, I hope you are, Bishop, where should my faith be destined to? To Jesus. Amen. To the word of God. If there's a word you're standing on, you ought to act like it's already happened instead of telling people you're waiting on it to happen. Instead of talking about what hasn't happened. Nobody should know the difference. He said, what do you want me to do for you? Because the faith had already achieved its purpose. When you're fully convinced, it's already happened. Our problem is we get frustrated because we don't see it. You don't have to see it. When Jesus stopped, he was already healed. Now, there's a process of getting to the manifestation of it, but just keep, keep living. Keep moving. You'll get there. But you've got to believe it's already happened. And that's what we give up. Because, well, I believe God can do it. Uh, but, you know, when I see him yesterday, well, you're going to see him tomorrow, too. Well, I've been waiting for two years, so what? How long is that to Jesus? He said, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Read it out loud for yourself. What did it say there? If you didn't believe me before, did I write this? No, sir. He said, your, your faith did this. Your faith has made you well. So for those of us who keep saying, Jesus, I need you to do it, when are we going to say, you know what? I'm going to try this myself. Not, not independent of Jesus. I'm going to try this through faith in Jesus. Please, don't make that mistake. Because, you know, we're quick to run away from Jesus. Well, I think I can do it by myself. Don't advise it. But through faith in Jesus, all things are possible. With me and these things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And check this out. Check this out. Jesus said to him, check this. I'm going to show you how cool this is. Jesus said to him, go your way. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. In other words, go to your house or wherever you want to go. Our business is done. Our business is done. Your faith made you well. Dude, you... You took the power from me. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. <coughs> Why is that important, Bishop? Because 
Too many of us too often get just just get a touch blessed. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I love it too, man. I love it too. I'm just like, watch this. I'm just waiting for light. As soon as God do something for you, well, I can't angle to make the church. Huh? <laughs> what? 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 What would stop you? <coughs> you took the blessing and ran away from God. How smart is that? And you know people doing it. You wouldn't even tell them. Some friend you are. As soon as God bless some people, well, you know, I can't, I can't give 10% of this. You, you, know, you do know I see who paid tithes in here, don't you? Do you, do you, know, do you realize that? That I, I know who paid tithes in here? Okay, I'm just checking if you know that. I also know who be asking God to bless them financially. I know that too. There's a correlation. Don't overwork me. <laughs> Don't overwork me. Got me praying for something that, that you you working against. Mm -hmm. My Lord. You want me to help go to God to do something you believe will change your life, and you ain't even doing what you can do. I could be praying about something else, mm. even for you. Amen. But if you start tithing mm -hmm. consistently Amen. and giving an offering, Amen. you can change your own life. Amen. Can anybody attest to that besides me? Amen. I mean, really. Don't just say it ain't true. Amen. Can, has anybody seen God do it for? <laughs> the best thing that came out of COVID, we we had to we 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 went to the ability to pay tithe online. Mm -hmm. When you see me patting that budget, it ain't because I ain't gay. Right, mm -hmm. I gave online. Mm -hmm. And a lot of y'all give online. Amen. I mean, Mr. Ben came and said, you know, might be a good idea just to. Shoot, shoot a text so we know the money got to the right place. <laughs> it went to the church. I was like, that's a great idea. I don't know. So I shoot you a text right for me. If I don't have any number, I'll find, I'll find somebody who got it. Give me this person's number. I got it. They, they paid tithes of that. Think of some of you online. Send me a comment. I, I, I promise I'll respond to it. That, appreciate it, Bishop. Give me an amen to that one. Some of you online be paying tithes. Mm -hmm. I just saw save your number in my phone, man. Let you know it got there. Amen. Hey, man, Jesus said, look, the, the, our business is done. Go on. The man said, I'm, I'm with you. Uh -huh. Amen. I'm following you. So this story is more than just a blind man receiving his sight from Jesus. This is about somebody who decided that their circumstances wouldn't define them. People around them wouldn't define them. They were going to take off who they were, take off the things that, that, that had been weighing them down, and make the moment happen. So if you're going to need a moment, create it. Stop waiting on it. Because some of you, since I've been starting this message, you've been waiting on it. You've been ready for it. But what if you could create it? And you can Sometimes when I pray, I just, sometimes it's different. I'm just being honest. Sometimes I'm like, look, you're going you to have to do this. Amen. I don't ask all the time. When I'm really up against it, I just, I just find a word that I don't be disrespectful. If I take that word, I'm like, you got to do this because you said so. And you can't lie. Amen. So if I believe that, why would I wait for it? Why wouldn't I just transform right then and there? Become it right then and there on the spot. Amen. 
I would. And I do. And you can. And you should. Amen. No point in me looking at this now, right? Amen. So the next time you come into this sanctuary, You ought to say that, look, Lord, I, I, your first lady done did it in this one, and she killed and jumped in there, but my, I'm, I'm next. Amen. 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 Now, let me, let, me, let me go a little further. I'm going to go off and see it all the way through. Now, if you say that, guess what's going to happen? You're not the only one saying it. Amen. But God can bless more than one person at one time. Amen. But you got to know, you ain't the only one saying it. Somebody's saying it, and somebody believing it. And there's going to be a distinct difference between those two people. One of them going to be all smiling and happy, and nothing can hurt them today, because I'm going to make a moment happen today, and I'm going to do what Bishop said. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cause God to stand still today and hear me. Amen. 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 And the other person going to be jumping around and bouncing around and running around and acting like a fool. <laughs> Making it happen. <laughs> Every time you come, you should be saying, this is the moment. That's why I get so excited about coming to church. That's why I want that, to let nothing stop me from coming to church. Amen. Yeah. I won't let my circumstances stop me. You don't know what I'm going through. And I don't have to tell you. I don't let people stop me. I'm like, this is between me and God. This ain't got to do with me and you. This ain't no fashion show. I didn't come in and see who, who dressed the best. Or if I was in the top 10. <laughs> I didn't come here for that. I fly all the time. I didn't come here for that. I didn't come in and see who I can talk about. Who I knew she wasn't going to be here today. I didn't come here for that either. I didn't come for that. I came here so I can have a moment with God. Amen. Me and him in his house. Because he said so. He said so. Don't have you. You ain't got to come to church. The church is where you. <laughs> it's still early. Let me just deal with that since I went, since I started on that road. Come on. Before you start having church at home, you need to learn how to have church. You need to come to church first. Mm -hmm. well, I ain't got to come to church to talk to God. I know, but how you talking to him mm -hmm. without no word? Amen. How you talking to him with that shaking faith? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 168 hours in a week, you can't give God two. Two. And what's more important than this again? Nothing. Well, I, I couldn't come because, okay, that's fine. I'll be here. I'll be here. COVID came, everything shut down. Guess what? We said we're going online. Mm -hmm. Me and my first lady come up here. Everybody tune in. We still having church. That's the one thing we can't stop doing. That's right. We wouldn't make, we wouldn't make it through it without God. Amen. Yeah. Oh, my God. And if you don't know the rest of the story, I encourage you to read the rest of it. It gets better. The church folks start, let me just tell you, because some of y'all ain't going to read it. I know you're going to read it. The church, no, I ain't going to do it. Read it for yourself. The church, no, I'm going to do it. The church folks, people went crazy, right? People went bananas. Following Jesus when they Jesus, when they saw Jesus do this, they they it was, oh my God they, oh my God he's the Messiah we we we, we all in we all we, we all in so the Pharisees got upset they said if these people keep following Jesus we're gonna lose our power at Rome so they called that blind man they said bring that bring that joke in here to us to the, bring him in here to the temple we don't question it right so they brought him in there and they said who is this man that did this to you 
And he did it on the Sabbath? He must be a sinner. Only a sinner would work on the Sabbath. I take a miracle any day of the week. I don't care Sabbath or no Sabbath. Amen. Me too. Seven days a week, I take a miracle. Any seven he chooses, give me one. Mm -hmm. Or anyone that decides I need it bad enough. Amen. Amen. They said, wait a minute, somebody gonna pay for this. If we, this ain't right. This man lying. He, he, he wasn't even blind. They said, get, send his parents in here. Go get his parents. <laughs> Mom and dad bought him in there. They said, is he blind? Was he born blind? And if he was, who healed him? Mama said, look, he, he don't want to speak for himself. Ask him. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to stay out of stuff. Mm -hmm. Your opinion ain't warranted in everybody's business. My Lord. The boy mama said, look, because if I say the wrong thing, y'all going to come for me. <laughs> he grown. He don't live with me. <laughs> I ain't going to go home, you know. Uh -uh. Ask him. That's what she said. Read it. She said, ask him yourself. He ought to ask him. Keep me out of it. <laughs> it's okay to not have an opinion. Amen. Have stuff happen around me, I don't open my mouth. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one people we want to say something. I'm like, I ain't got nothing to say about this. If God can tell me to say something, I ain't saying nothing. All right. I just say. So they kept on pressing the man. Who did it? He must be a sinner. That man said, how many times I got to tell you? And I don't know if he's a sinner or not. One thing I know was I was blind and now I can see. All right. That's all I know. Amen. I want to challenge you. Make a moment. Don't mean it. Make it. I'm going to say this again because I think, I, think I think it bears to say it again. If you're holding on to something that's hurting you, let it go. Amen. Let it go. Amen. How many times you touch a hot stove and you realize you're not to touch it no more? Amen. What's the real purpose of discipline? What's the real purpose of discipline? I'll, if you get the right answer, I'll, give, I'll buy a tank again. What's the real purpose of discipline? Yes, Jackson. No call. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, I saw he was first. <laughs> that's a really, that's a really sharp answer, man. That's a sharp answer. I'm gonna have to keep the pool rolling. That's a good answer, though, Jackson. It was very well articulated too. But I want something different. You had your hand up. Oh, I thought you said you had your hand up. Oh. <laughs> I saw him first. I get you in. What's the real purpose of this? That's close, man. Ah, no cigar. That's close. Change to cause change. Correction. Close to. Teach a lesson. Instruction. Huh? Instruction. 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 Love. Close, close. I don't think y'all can get them. Just give me an answer. Listen, the real purpose of discipline is to teach consequences. Mm -hmm. That's all right. It's to teach consequences. Mm -hmm. Cause if you mess up and you and there's a consequence, you will always think twice about doing that again. Because the fact that it's wrong is why we keep doing it. Because our, our flesh is drawn to wrong. Yeah, yes. The that's fact that it's wrong don't, don't you know, mm -hmm. change. Well, you know, that's subject to how you commit to it. It's to teach consequence. If you do this, you're going to get this. Is doing this worth this? You're like, I don't think so. I'm not going to do that again. All right. But if there's no consequence, guess what? <laughs> As it is with God, no different. Amen. So my, my challenge to you is make a moment. Amen. Don't just meet one, make one. Make a moment. Okay? Amen. All right, let's go.